What's up? What's up, everyone? It's finally that time. Planet Xbox, episode 15. And this is no traditional podcast. This is Starfield Edition. And I am with no other Iron Lords, Gaming Addict, Lord Addict, man. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, man. I think uh, people are going to really enjoy the, the conversation we have with this one, man. The it's uh we we both got a lot of hours in Starfield. And I think we yeah. can get a unique perspectives on the game. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm I'm glad this day is here. I'm I'm working off like minimum to no sleep. Been very very irresponsible the last uh, couple weeks, um, and playing Starfield. And now you know we're here. We can talk about it. We got some gameplay up. Uh, this gameplay is uh, uh, pretty much early in the game. Like pretty much uh, like as soon as you uh nope opening you no know, chapters and whatnot looks wonderful my opinion but um let's uh i don't know how you want to do this uh i know we got we opened up the patreon questions uh some people had questions for us uh specific specifically uh, uh for the game um if we want to tackle those first or just go with our initial impressions where, where should we start let's tackle the the patreon questions first and then we'll go to our general all right stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. So, we're gonna start uh, uh, this uh, episode off. The first question comes from Filthy Rich MXN. He says, "Now that you both have time with Starfield, what game would you compare it to, and what is it most annoying thing about the game?" Mm. The funny thing is, like, there's not really a game to compare this to. Is as funny as that sounds, like. There really isn't a game to compare this to. Um, I can uh, totally agree. Um, and, and people, I definitely can't compare it to because remember, I, you know, I've been, you know, my, all the receipts are out there for me. I usually avoid Bethesda games. So, um, well, they, I I don't, and I still can't really <laughs> compare it to their previous work. Yeah. Um, I, he says also, what's the most, uh, I guess, annoying thing about the game? The loading screens would probably be me. Cause there is quite a bit of loading screens. Like when you go to a certain world, you know, it, it's not, it's not like long, but you will notice there are some loading screens. Yeah. After a series of releases with games where loading screens were, you know, minimum, uh, or, or just very fast with these new consoles, uh, um, this is probably the my, like one of the only major knocks I have against Starfield is that the loading screens, and it's just more so as the inconveniences of, of where they're located. You know, getting in the ship, going into um a, a building which is pretty much at this point a level. Um, and uh, pretty much anything like going in and out of uh, uh from your ship when, when you're free roaming from the ship to going into a planet. So. Uh, depending on how you play this game, you're gonna run into you're gonna pretty much see a load of screen a lot. They're not again, they're not long, but it's something that does occur. And, and we kind of had like a couple years break where their loading screen was like almost, almost uh, non-existent. Uh, yeah, uh, for the most part, it's like I said, you know, the loading screens isn't that much, but there is quite a bit of them if you're like fast traveling around the world. Or if you're going from one planet to another, yeah. I, I will say once you play the game enough, you realize that there is like workarounds to certain things. There like is. you can, you can try if, as, long, as long as you're not in your ship and you fast travel, you won't have to use the ship to fast travel. So you only go through one loading screen instead of like three. Yes, yes, absolutely. And yeah, as more as, uh, of the game opens up, uh, there are there's a lot more quicker ways to get around. Um, you don't have to like there'll be ways where you can like completely skip complete sections of like just flying from uh area to area uh especially once you've ex explored the place um arcade 4247 says i saw at the end of the, of the direct trailer the game has abilities what's your favorite ability and can you combine effects um uh I think unfortunately we can't really <laughs> talk a lot about abilities because it's uh you know bethesda really wants to let you guys experience when it comes to you know how 
because it, it's a story related thing. Yeah. And they w and they don't want us spoiling stuff, so like we can't talk about that particular part of the game. But there are abilities. Mm -hmm. It's just we can't talk about. I can tell you this though, uh, Attic. Uh, me and Attic was playing at the same time. Uh, I think you didn't get your first ability into how many hours in compared? Because I know I got mine before you. I don't know, but I prefer us not to even bring the abilities up. We no, no, just... no, no. We got to talk about exactly what they are. Just that because the thing is, it's crazy the fact that they take a little bit to get them. Yeah, like, depending on how if you beeline some of the main story you know you'll obviously get to mm -hmm. certain aspects of the game quicker than other people that didn't i kind of just went straight for the uh you know factions and stuff yeah. that, that's what i generally do stealing ships <laughs> or or trying no, to. No, that that was just me being a menace that yeah. wasn't really anything to do with the factions um shooting guard for the memphis grizzly says about the planets do they feel all different, or is it No Man's Sky type? Be like, I'm sorry. Let me repeat this question. He says, "Do they feel?" He says about the planets. Do they feel all different, or it's a No Man's Sky type beat when Planet One got red leaves and Planet Two is the same with yellow leaves? Um, what I'll say is I do feel that for the most part they. They got the planets semi good. Now, obviously, there's going to be some that repeat. That's just how it goes. But I will say that I never got to the point where I was like really frustrated that I saw like the same thing over and over mm -hmm. again. Like this, this is a procedurally generated game. So you're going to see some of the the new features of uh you know some of the reused assets because mm -hmm. that's just how procedurally generated it is like that's literally the the name of the game uh but i will agree that you know once you visit enough planets i think smooth will agree mm -hmm. you do start seeing repeats of of the same stuff um honestly i now i have visited a lot of uh planets because but i've i haven't visited unless i unless i had to i have not believe it or not i have not visited the same planet twice outside of select like obviously you know main quest related stuff and and just because i knew where certain like vendors and and doctors were i i went back for a reason but tip as far as for resources and doing like factions based stuff um or you know i've i've pretty much been exploring different uh planets and they they are diverse enough of course like you'll see like uh repeat like creatures and stuff unless the planet's type the environment of the planet is like completely different like obviously there's some planets that are just too cold to feature like some of the um plant life or animal life that exists on one planet and then it, it actually told me in a loading screen once that Depending on like the oxygen levels of the planet, yeah. or you know if it can, if it's hot enough to where water won't freeze, that's a better odds of finding like life on that planet. Yes, that that's true. Like so, I've been on completely frozen tundra, um, completely uh, hot planets, and 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 this what what it forced me to do. I had to start paying attention. I don't know if you did this. I, I had to start paying attention to my spacesuit. In his attributes, because I would go to planets and I would start taking on damages, and like I would wear a a, a suit that I thought because it like looked cool, but I had visited like three planets. You that, find out that ain't shit. Yeah, like, the stats ain't shit, and I got sick. Like that's where, and I'm like, and I had to go to the doctor, get antibiotics to treat the the sickness. But the thing is, I never changed my suit. And then one time I kept getting, they give you like this alert sound. I was like, I got my space suit on. What's going on? And I'm looking at it, I'm like, damn. Oh, this suit ain't protecting me. And I forgot I had a legendary suit that actually was better for the environment. I and I actually just equipped that actually today um, uh, to finish out before we went to on, on this podcast. Uh, we got one more question from DJ. He says, smooth. Are you enjoying Starfield, and do you see yourself beating it? If so, how much of it is due to it being hyped Xbox exclusive? Versus, oh, I'm sorry, how much, of, how much of it is it due to being a hyped Xbox exclusive versus this finally being the one Bethesda game you enjoy? Um, 
DJ, this is a really good question, and I'm going to be extremely honest. Uh, I think, one, I'll answer this question. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying Starfield. I'm enjoying Starfield, and, and for those who've followed me this all year, and I, and I said Starfield, even at the beginning of the year, it's like it's not my most anticipated game because of the type of game that it is. I, by default, I'm probably not going to like it. I was more interested in Redfall, and we know how Redfall turned out to be. Um, so this was more so Murphy's Law, right? So you know how there's, for example, like it took it took me a while to appreciate any sort of Souls game, right? And then, you know, here comes Bloodborne, and then that was the game that I finally was able to beat and like, right? Uh, same thing it happened with a uh, a series of uh, what what other a series of like JRP uh, not J, I want to say JRP, uh, the anime type games like for example I don't pl- I didn't play like a uh, big fan of like those like JRPGs and stuff like that um, and then Scarlet Nexus came and it became one I really liked to the point I finished to a, a beat to completion um, didn't like a, a whole lot of uh, uh, what's the team that made a uh, freaking um, Wolong, right? I, I didn't like uh, Team Ninja. Yeah, I didn't like a lot of their games, but it, it, it there was finally a game that they came, and I feel like it's Murphy's Law. With that, like, all right, I struggled with a lot of uh, Bethesda games and getting into them. Um, so you know, I couldn't get in Fallout, couldn't get through through an Elder Scrolls game, and I had optimism about Starfield because I was like, the I was like, the saving grace is this is not like. A Fallout Five or an Elder Scrolls Seven. This is a new IP, and we all get in at the same time. So I don't have anything to really learn. We're all learning this game at the same time. So it's probably easier for me to get into a Starfield than to get into a uh, a story franchise like a Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Um, but it just so happens, for example, I anticipated Redfall to be the the game that I would really you know like. It didn't happen, and Starfield ended up being uh, the game and. I'm joyfully, I, I enjoy it. I liked it. And it, it's not too much of a surprise now. I'm not comparing these games. They're not, they're not alike. Um, but of course, I, I didn't get through a whole lot of Obsidian games. But the Outer Worlds came out and I loved it. And I was like, hey, because I played the Outer Worlds, maybe I can actually get through a, fa- a, a, a Fallout oh. game. But I haven't gotten to a, I haven't resumed a Fallout game since. The, be- the better question is... Mm. You're beating around the bush, what? right? What? I don't make you answer his question. It's, okay, is the reason that you that you may or may not, or even attempted to try Starfield, mm-hmm. is because is if, is it's an Xbox exclusive? All right, that's a better question. Not be- this was a good question. All right, me actually jumping in and trying it. <laughs> Yeah, probably it being an Xbox exclusive is a is it sure helped. It definitely helped that. Now the game Bethesda delivering on a what I feel um, a a hell of a good game is what kept me in it. Like I didn't think now to be honestly real, and I'm pretty sure I might have a bet against Hardy on this one. But the people, I even my expectation was I was gonna play it for a little bit. All right, whatever. You know, I played it, but I, I just wasn't gonna be. I was just gonna drop. I expected that I would drop it. Right. Um. At this rate, I I don't see myself dropping it. I I, I can't stop playing it. So it's I, it's honestly per, I really actually like it. I have there's there's no I'm not gonna pretend that I like it. If I didn't like it, I ain't like it. I mean, if I was gonna pretend, I could pretend to like Redfall, and I would have forced myself to to play through that. Um, but um, no, I I really like the game. I really like the game. I don't know what that means for the the rest of the group because I tend I tend to like games that nobody the rest of the world doesn't so i don't know what that means for starfield <laughs> i i do not know what that means for starfield man uh but great questions guys so, it's great questions well, what you're saying just to clarify is mm-hmm. that you try you was more open to trying the game because it was an exclusive to xbox but mm-hmm. you know games like redfall even though that was an exclusive mm-hmm. it didn't it didn't captivate you enough to continue playing but starfield yeah. did yes yes and and, and and I don't play every Xbox games. There's there are previous Xbox games that you know I would try because it's an Xbox exclusive, but they don't captivate me. Like I I haven't beaten a single Ori game. 
Um, and I know they're highly regarded. It's just you that tried though. You definitely tried. I tried. I I, I tried and it, I I just give up. Um, I haven't. I'm trying. There there there's a, there's a few of games like I don't I don't think I've uh, a completed State of K. I struggle with that game. Um, I struggle with We Happy Few. I don't, that's not an Xbox exclusive, but um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a ton of them that like I can't get with. Um, and there's some that I can't, I mean, I, I played through Deathloop, but I was able to do, had it not been for Attic, <laughs> I probably wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't have beat it. I like, I'm glad that we played it because I, I liked the story of it, but I can't, I didn't enjoy enough to play it again once it came to Xbox. I played some of it, I was like, all right, I'm good. Ghostwire Tokyo was good enough where I played twice on PC and on Xbox and Hi-Fi Rush. I thought it was great. Um, all right. So great questions, guys. Now, now let's really just get into it. Our raw, our raw thoughts, man. Uh, we've had two weeks, or at least what it feels like two weeks with the game. Attic, like your honest thoughts. I, I, I know I've been poking you about you know other games like you know Baldur's Gate. What is like, I, like where do you see this ranking? Is this like game of the year? Like what's what's up? What is your thoughts? I think the the biggest thing that's going to hinder this game is tutorial access mm -hmm. I feel like they don't explain a whole lot of like just basic features of the game mm -hmm. for instance i've explained how to board uh board ships to like three different people uh because they just tell you one time but they don't explain to you if that's like going to be the standard across every system and i think that that's going to really hurt people because i had someone that almost quit because they thought they had a, to to approach a spaceship at a certain angle and it would just trigger board boarding the ship but no you what? have to press the scanner press a on the ship you want to board and if it's accessible to board it will give you a dock option but they don't really explain that a whole lot mm. all right so believe it or not um yeah you gotta what is it I'm trying, I don't want to confuse it because you got to, I'm not, I don't want to, you get, don't you got to hail it first? You got to, to signal it? Um, no, if, if you can, now, helling, well, hell is pretty much H-A-I-L, uh, it's not H-E-L-L. -L. Yeah. But pretty much like that is like communicating with them. Okay. Never, now, okay. yeah, so now that might potentially... That might lead to you being able to dock the ship. I know the the little activity side quest thing with Grandma, uh, the Grandma ship. Uh, she she's like a single person trying to get you on her ship. I think you that could lead to you uh, boarding her ship. But for the most part, the only way to board ships is to blow, uh, is to disable the engines. And when the engines are disabled, you you're able to board any ship. Yeah, you see me personally, and you've heard me. In plenty of party chats during my ship fights, I'm at raging. Now I suck. I, I, I suck at ship fighting. It, it takes me multiple tries. So what I really need to be allocating my resources to is having a bomb ship, an uh, uh, awesome ship, because I suck at it. I rage quit. Um, I rage like to the point. By the time I'm in position to like, I feel like I upper upper hand. Like I've just dis destroyed the ships. I haven't boarded any like ships outside of ships that I was pretty much required to board or ships that I um where I had a, a quest to board it where it became obvious but like like I'll tell you say to myself hey I'm gonna try to board uh board the ship and then about time my third attempt of trying to fight the ships because it's I haven't in the game doesn't in, now this is, I could be wrong in this but so far from my experience uh because this is my least favorite part of any video game is uh, space combat or air combat. Um, I don't like the fact that I have to fight m multiple ships at once because I feel like I'm always at a disadvantage. And um, and I, I don't like the way that the ship controls. Now, the only thing I will say, just give me everybody a heads up. I haven't used no other ship outside of my stock ship. I've upgraded a couple things. Actually, I upgraded by at the time of this uh, this video. I've upgraded actually a lot of things on the stock ship, but I haven't flown another ship outside of the the frontier. 
Um, so that could be uh, partly the reason why I'm getting wrecked in in most of these uh, battles. Now I have earned another ship. I'm just not qualified to fly it yet um, at the recording of this uh, video. Um, it does feel satisfying to. Uh, I think we need to, to explain what you mean by you're not qualified. Okay. In in Starfield, mm -hmm. uh, you, they you have you have like a tech. Day. I don't know if. if it's going to put like the tech tree in the background. I don't know if he has access to that, but I'll, I'll explain it to you. Uh, there's like five different trees in the, in the technology, uh, the tech tree. There is a perk that lets you, it's, it's called pilot or, or yeah, something pi like yeah, that. Pilot, and yeah. every time you upgrade that, you can take over a certain type of ship. Yes. You know, uh, they, they go, the, oddly they go up down. Normally they go down up. Like you have a C, uh, uh, you know, D, B, C, A, mm -hmm. but they actually, A is the worst ships you can get. B is the better ships and C is like the ships you want because mm -hmm. they have access to the most types of weapons. They, they have access to like the advanced stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what Smooth's saying is he's shooting these ships down or he, he has the, av the ships available to him but he doesn't have the tech upgrade to fly them. Yeah. And uh, I learned this. So, and this is where the game it trips me out a bit, right? Because I feel like I've, I've done, like I've strayed so far doing a quest line where I got gifted by the end of the quest line. I got gifted like a ship, a pretty damn good ship. I was like, yes. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at how, how much of a difference or an upgrade it is for my current ship. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't. I can't fly this because I have to during throughout the all the hours I've been put in the game. I've been allocating all my resources to the ability, obviously, to have high health, uh, the ability to hold maximum items. Because I find that I, when it comes to these games, I'm a hoarder. I pick up things, so I found myself getting over encumbered a lot. Um, and when you're over encumbered in uh, Starfield, uh, they don't wait. They don't wait you down. Uh, you're still able to run and jump. The problem is you just you run out of oxygen a lot quicker. Therefore, you're losing health a lot. It, it'll, it'll start tackling um, your health, and then you will have other ailments that tack on, like cramping and getting like lung disease and and, and stuff like. You, you, you'll you'll jump off of something that's not too high, but you'll sprain an ankle, or uh uh or you'll get um. Yeah, you'll sprain an ankle or something like that, and you have to. It just you'll have to start burning through more resources to treat yourself. And so, what I did was I I put all my resources into you know being able to carry his maximum stuff, uh, having max health, and being able to um, get more out of the medicine I use. Um, and then, of course, you I played it's I played these games like a damn shooter, so a lot, a lot of those other allocations went into combat. Like, uh, like shooting and pistol, and I just started allocating things to like my like jet. Pack. I like I allocated things to a jetpack like mad late, extremely late into my uh, uh playthrough. So by the time that I got this new ship, which I probably should have gotten like later, um, in my playthrough, I'm just I'm just not prepared to fly. I gotta now do more stuff so I can rank up my pilot ability so I can fly the ship that I earned. <laughs> The, the beauty thing about Starfield is like it it does take that Skyrim that classic Bethesda fold in, into place. Like one time I you know I, I'm sitting here being a COVID I, not COVID I'm I, I'm doing some espionage I, I'm sitting here being a spy and then it leads me into some experimental ship uh, spaceship that I got to steal this ship from like it, it, it's just you don't know what you're going to be doing on Starfield until mm -hmm. you come across what you're doing on yeah. Starfield. Yeah. Um, what I'll say is, is that there's like, there's so much, so much going on. Um, what, how would you describe like the quests? Right. So I'm going to tell you how I, I feel about them right quick. The one thing that I, I, I still think, even right now, just that's amazing about this game is that I feel like there's no quality drop off from a main quest to a side quest to a faction based quest. And even some of the activities have like a decent, like, um, like a decent quality to them. Like, I don't feel like it. 
I don't feel like I'm I'm losing anything. It's not obvious that I'm doing a side quest or, or that I'm doing a quest that's unrelated to the main main quest when when I played it. And um and it bugged me out because I started to check like all like the missions that I completed and I like seen how many of them I like I did a lot. And, but when I compared it to what was related to my main quest, I'm like, damn. I, I actually spent a whole lot of time doing stuff that had nothing to do with the main quest line. But each quest that you do, I feel like these story arcs, um, like they, they, they develop and they open up really quickly in a way that they like kind of go from one thing. You, you find yourself doing one thing, then it, it leads to another thing. And you start picking up quests. It's very, very easy to pick up quests. I do find that, you know, people will get overwhelmed with quests if they're not, like, pacing themselves. Yeah, and, you know, I think what really, really helps them with this game is, you know, when you play those other, you know, type of games, well, you don't play Bethesda games like no. that, but mm. it, it always feels like, oh, you know, all this serious stuff's going on, the world's about to end. Let's go do these other faction stuff. Fuck the world. We don't care about the world. Uh, what, what's nice about this game is you don't really get that feeling like that because I feel like that's breaking immersion a little bit. Yeah. But you don't really get that feeling because it's a it's it's a universe. What is what is good for you know Planet B in Galaxy Seven? Yeah. Isn't necessarily is good in Planet F in Galaxy Fifteen. So like. It feels like unique experiences no matter where you go. You also don't feel like, you know, the world is creeping down on you because you're in multiple worlds, you know. Yeah. And what I like that they did is they really put a lot of time and effort behind the civilizations in, in, yeah. in Starfield. You know, when you go to these cities, you got you got cities that... That, that look like cyberpunk in, in certain ways. You got cities that's like old style with yeah, old Aquila, guns. Aquila, and, Aquila, Aquila City and Neon is what I, I felt like I was playing cyberpunk for seven hours. Because I spent New Atlantic, yeah. wh it w which is like the, you know, the biggest like government type of thing. Like all these places, you could spend hours in any one of them doing missions, doing side quests, mm -hmm. helping them deal with their own stuff. Not to mention the majority of the factions. They're from one of these cities, so yeah. you're you you you're gonna have issues on that to end. Like I had um the because I was a menace to society in my game, so the the free fighter, whatever they're called, free form. So that they're a faction in the game, and I had a member, an ex member of their faction in my team. So one time, I shot one of them in space, took him down. That dude wasn't feeling it, and I did it again, and the, like there was serious beef there. And, and I like that they constantly check you. Do you sure you want to be this way? Because yeah. there's certain ca companions that are with it. They're yeah. with the smoke. But the, there's certain that's like, yo, this ain't going to work. I, I'm, we have to separate. Or, yeah. you know, I haven't had any of them try to, like, fight me. But, you know, I, I'm sure that that can happen if yeah. you make them mad enough. Yeah, so you you hit the nail on the coffin. The companions and and and, and the uh, the civilizations and the cities and, and how everything correlates. So, for example, and, and there's also you to learn like the companions and their history with some of these cities that you may visit. For example, Sarah, her situation is like now, mind you, when I first started the game I, with these big games, I start off and I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I forgot how I ended up on Neon. Neon was one of the first planets uh, that I visited. And but at the time I went to Neon, I had no real main missions there. I just kind of just went there. And you, if I remember correctly, yeah. you went to Neon hours before I did. Yeah. Yeah. Neon was literally like the first thing. And, I, and then I, that's when I realized, it's like, holy crap. Like, all the stuff I just did on this planet had nothing to do with... I, I I did I completed like all the stuff on Neon before I actually completed a first constellation mission, and that's why I was like bugging. Like I was like, "Yo, like why?" I I, I like I read something wrong and I went somewhere. I went to Neon and the things that I was able to do on Neon. Like I literally like because I, I think one of my backgrounds was a gangster, so I started a gang, got beef with a gang, destroyed all the gangs. Right and, and and but now they all joined the security. Now the security is even more corrupt than, than before I got there, 
And the funny thing is, is I also got a job there. So I've also gotten like a, a real job where I had to uh, apply, uh, fill out an application, do a questionnaire. That was a fashion too, wasn't it? Uh, there, that, there are some, th that. yes, but I think for this one, this one, the job that I got is, is not linked to a faction. It started from like a side quest. And then the thing is I could keep the job so I could check in and do shifts. Um, so the job that I currently got on neon, How much did is, they pay you? dude, honestly, back then uh, they were paying me, um, it's really cheap. I don't know how much it would be now, but remember, I did it early in the game, and I was telling, and I was telling you, dude, I like, I only got like three thousand credits, right? But this is when you had like double digit, like thousands of credits. Um, I got, uh, but the thing is uh, that made it crazy is that so Sarah, uh, Sarah from Constellation, she doesn't mess with uh, Neon. She doesn't mess with it. You, you there? Adi, can you hear me? All right, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. So Sarah, yeah, my, uh, headset died. she doesn't mess with like Neon at all. Like, so when we got there, she was like, yeah, I don't like this place. Like, you know, I want to like head back. And then I was headed towards uh, a, 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 another like um, area of Neon called Ebside, which is pretty much the hood um, there um, for yeah. lack of better terms. No, no, no. That's what it is. It's it's that's where all the gang, uh, the gangs and stuff are at. And she was like, she was like, if you, she was like, I, I, unfortunately, if you go there, I, I can't come with you. I have too much history here. And I was like, all right, my bad. And there's been situations where the thing is, is that on some planets, I'm a, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm peaceful. I'll talk my way out of anything, any sort of fight. Well, some planets, like when I go to Neon, I'm always ready to like, I can, you know, again, I can, I can go to, um, in some planets, I'm like, I'm shoot first. But who, whoever you're with, though, they respond different. And I've had, like, people like Sarah and um, what's the black dude's name? The first one, the dude that gives you the watch. Barrett. Barrett. I had them both leave me in the middle of gunfights. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I won't go into detail because I don't know if, it, if like, we're allowed to. Mm -hmm. But I've had companions die. Yeah, my, I had Vasco die. Oh, he did. He died. Now, I don't know if he permadeath, but I definitely had. He like, is a robot. Yeah, so I don't know if it counts, but um, they the, and also though, the companions they're very like they get emotional, and um, they'll get bored if you don't like interact with them or give them jobs. But the thing is though, the one special thing I do like about the companions. I don't know if you spent like a significant amount of time with one of them over another, but they start having like just these random quests come up because they got because they'll start talking to you and, and tell you about their past. And like, for example, Barrett, he has like a I don't know if this is a, a spoiler. It's not a spoiler because I haven't come to the conclusion yet, but. I he we opened up a full blown investigation about his friend and I, I'm literally like ten thousand credits of paying him so he can pay investigators to find out what happened to his friend who like I guess got like killed uh prior to being investigated for something that he was being framed for. And so every time I check in, but the problem is now I haven't been able to find Barrett to add him as a companion so he can so we can finish the journey. I've been stuck with Lynn. Uh, for like the last, honestly, for probably what feels like the last four or five hours. Lynn's actually pretty helpful. She's helpful, but I feel like she doesn't have uh, her, she doesn't add anything to like the quest. I feel like Sarah and Barrett and even, what's the cowboy dude? Uh, Sam Coe? Mm -hmm. They they have things, they have, I feel like they have more things of value, more, uh, they actually add to the story because they, they start opening up quest lines. Uh, on their own that's also unrelated to the main quest that you're doing which i think is is, is pretty damn um pretty damn cool um the other thing that uh i think that, that i'm very impressed with is i'll say this is that you know i think the game looks awesome best graphically best game uh you know uh todd howard has produced on visuals um I'm a big fan of the gameplay, uh, especially with certain guns. Um, 
I, I, it's satisfying. I find the gameplay, uh, the gunplay, extremely satisfying. And the, one of the things I really, really like about this game, um, and I can't stress it uh, enough, is the first person, the second, or what I call the uh, uh, PlayStation template third person, and then the standard third person views, they, they all feel native like into their view they don't feel like like previous bethesda games where you know they're meant to play in first person they give you a third person option but they don't feel like a third person game it just feels like you're playing a, a first person game in third person and it just doesn't like feel right these things this game in third person feels natural like so that's why when i was playing i i, I don't know if do you play typically in first person I, yes. I've, the only time I ever switch to fir uh, third person is if I'm in like an intense space battle mm -hmm. and I need to find out if someone's like above or below me. Sometimes I'll switch to photo mode just to see where everyone is. <laughs> like, wow. I've I, done that. I, I like, there's been that. six or seven people mm -hmm. and I'm having a hard time keeping up with them all. I will switch to, to photo mode just to get a mental ideal of where everyone's at. I've So I played the game... It's, it's been 50 50. I play like some, uh, I play half the game in first person and half the game in uh, the third person. And I've been satisfied. Like, I feel like, because there's certain gun battles where it's like, all right, I, I need to be in first person for this. The, um, if it's just like a, like a tight area. But when it's a, more of an open area, I like being in third person so I can take cover and whatnot. And the game, graphic, the, the, the quality of the game, the graphics, doesn't change when you go from first or say actually i feel like it looks better in in some cases like people will see that i'll have a, a like a series of gameplay footage from starfield and it'll look like three different freaking games three different games um all right like right now i got this uh the knee one of the neon sections when i first got there and, and uh joined the game put this cool ass outfit on you really think i would be playing like a uh, cyberpunk right now it looks nothing you would you would not think this was starfield um and and that's like one thing that I, I do like about the game that how na natural that it feels no matter what mode you're playing if you want to play it like a traditional third person you can do that and you can stay that way uh, for the entirety of the game if you want to play it in first person it feels comfortable nothing feels off um, uh, feels off about it. Yeah, I was for the most part when I played I was about to smoke. You know, uh, <laughs> they, there'd be times where I'd pull up and there'd be like. There's like ten of us and one of you just leave. You don't want this. And, and you know, I started that shot by shooting that person. You're like yeah, I remember forget there's like a chick that I, I went there to get something mm -hmm. and she was like, Well, I don't think this is gonna work out well for you. And I was like, Oh really? And I and I got some strong weapons at this point. I'm yeah. like I'm almost level forty. So <laughs> I started I have a shotgun that catches people on fire. And I and so I tried to do the persuasive one. It didn't mm -hmm. work because I don't, I don't really talk to people. I don't have a whole lot of uh, skill points in that. Yeah. So after that, I was like, you know what? I turned around. I started walking out, and then I stopped because you know when you get to a point where you, like you they won't talk to you anymore after yeah. you fell. Yeah. Well, she wasn't talking anymore. She was literally even saying, "I'm done talking to you." I started walking out of the room and I just stopped, and then I just pulled out that shotgun. I'm like. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> I probably killed 20, 30 people in that building. See, oh, so your body count is probably high. You know, you know what's crazy? I've only been credited for two murders. Hold on, I think I, because I have it up right now. Let me see if it will tell me. If it it, 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 it tells you murder. If you press, if you press uh, the, the menu button, right, to bring up your, your UI, and you press, I believe, I believe Y, it should tell you your stats. And Prime. Uh, yep. So I've killed eighteen people. So and so those eighteen people aren't people that you were, you know, obviously killing like the legal kills because I I've killed seven hundred and twenty two people. I've killed five hundred and twenty seven creatures. I've killed six hundred and twenty two robots. I've killed one hundred and fifty turrets. I've killed three hundred and twenty two elite enemies. I've done uh, 426 critical strikes. 
I, I didn't really do too many of that. I have scope killed 433 people. I have ballistic killed over a thousand people. I have destroyed over 700 ships. See, yeah, yeah, I would not, I'm not touching you there. There's no, if you, how do you destroy 700 ships? Because I, I, just I don't think I've came from, across 700 ships. I'd just be going from galaxy to galaxy looking for smoke. And, and where so many of the galaxy don't like me because I've pissed off so many factions, a lot of the times it would be like two or three factions, like two, two factions fighting each other. And sometimes both factions don't like me and they just all team up on me. All right. I'm going to tell you a, a situation I had in this game that I thought was really funny, right? Because, oh, I've, I've heard you I've heard you uh do some some space combat. Uh you know, you yeah. you, you definitely need to improve on that aspect. Yeah, space combat is is bar uh, bottom of the barrel for me, but no, uh, one of the things like that happened to me is what I had to do a, a, a quest for somebody because this uh I this I guess one dude owed some dude some money and and in order for him to uh, complete my quest I had to pretty much get this dude off his back and at this point I'm feeling good because I I had successfully done like five straight persuasive like I literally persuaded um uh my gang from like literally getting free armor uh from um uh from uh the uh there's a I don't know a gunsmith or whatever in the area and I, they wanted me to buy it, but I'm like, well, I gotta buy it. So the thing is, I was able to persuade him, and uh, I didn't get it for free. I talked to him into like dumb cheap, and um, so I was on like this hot streak of like just having like good persuasion, and I started adding like um, XP to my persuasions, uh, my persuasion ability. So I had to do a quest where I had to um, get this dude off uh, one of the store owners' backs. And so I went into the bar to talk to him. Now, mind you, I've been to this bar before. And when I first met this, the, the owner, she says, because this one girl, when I first went into the bar, this one girl was giving me smoke. Like, she was, like, talking like she wanted to, like, do something. And the bar owner was like, hey, we don't do that in here. You know I don't like violence, da, da, da. And, and that was that. And, but she always kept that, mon that mantra, right? So the next time I'm going back to this bar on something completely different. So I already like did favors for the bar owner and whatever, so they know who I am. So I go in and I do the uh, I, I I I approach the person that I need to because he's inside this bar, and I felt the persuasion like I couldn't get him. So he was at this point he was done he was done talking. So the next action is we're gonna fight. So he pulls out him and his crew pulls out his guns right, and because that engaged like. An action sequence. The bar owner took out her gun and start shooting at both of us, <laughs> and it was like, "Yo, that that that's crazy." I don't know why I found I, that. Like, I'm like, and I'm like, "How do I?" Because the problem is, I don't want to cause trouble. Because I like the area. I, I have good rapport in that area, so I did not want to like, uh, piss her off. But the thing is, it was like fight or fight. So what I did was I. I ended up killing him, and then I had to literally leave the city and get arrested, pay the fine, so because uh, when uh, to get the city off of me, I thought that was cool. But the one thing I don't like that happens is I do feel like the uh, the the game overreacts to like you know petty crimes. So I was in Aquila, and, and Aquila, I'm I'm a ranger, I'm a ranger in a, a, Aquila City, and I was there. Because I needed to plant something, which is, is, is messed up now. I think about it. I needed to plant something in one of the gun, gun stores for, uh, what's that crew? There's a faction there that they do, they're like corporate, but they be doing corrupt shit. Um, I, for, I, I think it's called Ryan, R-Y-U-N or something like Ryuin. Uh, so I've never, I haven't come across them. Yeah, what's so, funny is when I was talking to, uh, to solve, mm -hmm. solve was telling me that uh, there is an actual, there's a faction that does nothing with space stuff. Oh and yeah, I didn't even know they existed. <laughs> See that? That's crazy. That actually, I met them. They're they're in uh, they're in um, New Atlantis apparently. That's um, mm, that's what's the name's crew. Wallers, the the old guy, the old rich guy. 
I'm out. Uh, yeah. His, that's how I got the ship. That's how I got the ship that I can't fly. I went and I, and I had to, um, he, he promoted me to oversee his ship, ship designs. And um, I had to get them all to work together uh, to build the next line of ships. And at the end of it, because I, I convinced them to, because they were struggling between going from like a budget ship to like going all in. And I had to get the budget approved. And I so the ship that they made, no wonder I can't fly it because I opted for the whole kitchen sink option. The kitchen sink option, which F the budget, make whatever you can make. But anyway, that's... Uh, Neither here nor there. So, I, so I, I went to Aquila City because I had to plant like um, these papers inside uh, this gun store. And um, what happened was when I came went downstairs, I got behind the bar because I couldn't figure out where to act to activate the sequence. This random NPC comes, and she stands next to me. But she stands next to me in a way where the game does it. it she's blocking me in the bar. And I couldn't move. So I could, I could jump, but I couldn't jump out of that, her being blocked in. But I needed to get out. And so I didn't, there was nothing else to do. So when I said, I was like, F it. So I punched her. And when I punched her, she moved. I was, I was free to move again. So, but when I punched her, it initiated the whole freaking town to come at me and chase me through the town, and I did not want to shoot or kill nobody in this town because it was a town. I'm a one. I'm a ranger, and two. I just I built a whole lot of rapport there, and I spent literally no lie, like 25 minutes running from security, townsmen, uh, bar owners, until I literally had to run from them until uh, a a proper security caught me one on one in the elevator where. They, I could pay a fine and get arrested. That I was willing to pay a fine and get arrested. Then they have to try to fight the entire city. And I just feel like that little bit too sensitive of a of a reaction because I didn't kill the woman. I punched her. I had there was this one scenario where I was coming across and I came across this big ship. Now keep in mind, let me br point out that I did finish uh, one of the key factions tonight, mm -hmm. and there is this part where. And I'm sure you've came across a big, big Star Wars type of ship. Yeah. It's huge. And yeah. there's like a bunch of ships around it. Well, smooth. I fought that platoon. <laughs> I fought all of them, smooth. But I wasn't alone. Like, I had like 20 ships with me. Who? My thing is, but at that point, who would you recruit like for them all to join you? Is that Crimson? Did they? Because that's the only yes, people yes, I could think who would actually join up and do something like that. Yes, it was Crimson. Yeah, and be. we 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 had like it was like a six part like step mission where like because they they had way more firepower than us. Yeah, and let me tell you, my ship at this point because I've leveled it up so much and I've upgraded it so much, there's not much in this in this universe that can fuck with me. You know, <laughs> I've literally took out ships. And they and they they cry to let me they to let me live. There's this one time where I guess like I've blown so many ships up where a ship did the, the did the emergency feature thing, and he said, "Yo, I know who you are. We don't have to go down this route." Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it no go ahead. It, 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 what's funny is like my ship don't take shit from people. But this shit, these ships, they, I would, I almost died like three times. Like, cause my ship is, is big and slow, but mother, but once I get you in my seats, <laughs> and, 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 and these ships were so beefy that they were just taking in a ridiculous amount of shots. See, that's, see, that's where I need to get to. Cause I feel like I can't handle like least amount of combat. Like I've. I'm still like struggling against like extremely low level ships because all they need is two or three of them, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna struggle. So that's why I'm I'm, I'm like working to get um, myself up so I can get a hold of that ship because I also because the frontier can only fit a maximum of like two people you can assign to that ship, but the ship that I got mine can, can fit like ten or something. Like yeah, that. so the ship that I, I I'm, I'm pending that I, that I'm try, still trying to claim can fit up to five. And, and that's pretty good for it to be my only my second ship. So it's a, it's going to be a massive upgrade. 
Um, so, but man, this this game, I I I don't know what to say, man. This is like, what do you think in, in terms of uh, the leaks? People are gonna want to talk about obviously the planet, uh, you know, running in one direction for ten minutes, not being able to land on the sun <laughs> or Saturn. <laughs> Yeah, look. First off, that's stupid. It's a gas planet. Like even in Destiny, there, there, there's no landing on Saturn. Yeah. Like sure. What's funny is in Destiny they had a location around Saturn because yes. you can't land in Saturn. It's not a physical object. Like, uh, you know, it's fair. I, I will say that the universe is a little bit fake exploring. Because they make you feel like you can like really explore this massive universe, and it's massive. But it there's not a, like besides like the space combat, uh, you're gonna spend a lot of the time when you're in the universe going from like sector of a galaxy to another sector of a galaxy. You don't want to make that trip manually because it will take way too long. Yeah. Uh, when you jump into hyperspace. You know, I, I like the little things like when you're flipping the the switches, mm -hmm. like that never gets old. Every yeah. time I jump into hyperspace, I jump into first person and just see him flipping the the the, the switches. Like it, it's it's good. Like I, I get it. People are like if you criticize this game and you have just wanting the game to be good. Like I didn't really find issues with people criticizing a thousand planets. I do feel like the game has a little bit of fluff on it, but. A kind of game like this, it kind of has to have some form of fluff. Yeah. You have, if you're going to go out there and promote this massive universe space type of game, first off, it's going to take 10, 15 years to hand draw on all of those planets. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you're going to have to procedurally generate yeah. some things. I will say that there are a lot of times I went on a planet. And like there wasn't a lot there. Mm. There was some life force. I, I I came across these squids that are shooting blue magic balls at me. Yeah. And they were they were annoying. So yeah. th there's a lot of like really captivating stuff here. The only thing I would actually would like them to have done, and they didn't really they they kind of let me down is I wanted more Easter eggs. You know, mm -hmm. Bethesda is well known for their for their creatures in their games for their games in general mm -hmm. how cool it would have been if there would have been i know you wouldn't know who it is uh um, smooth but there's these things in fallout called death claws yeah yeah i know what you're talking about wouldn't it have been cool if you went to a planet and there was a nest of them honestly addict though it, i i don't even hold you but based off the stuff that some of us i wouldn't be surprised if that's actually there and we just haven't seen it yet I'm so pretty sure that, they, they, they probably generated a, a couple of them on the planet. Um, so the thing is, I think we'll find out really fast once this goes to the masses and not. Yeah, just yeah, access. because and that's the thing. I feel like no, everybody's game is because I feel like you've had a complete different experience than I have. I've been trying to bang Sarah Sarah Marshall, by the way. This in this entire every time there's been an opportunity to romance her. But she shuts me down. So um, the the one thing I do uh, the, the the whole thing about the whole uh, like running across the planet, I, I people were doing stuff in these like leaks that I didn't once think about even attempted. Like I didn't try to run from one side of the planet to the other. That's I, I does I, that. I does, see. Look, look, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I didn't try to. It, didn't, it just didn't occur look, to me. Look, why would up, I try to? Hold up. Let's pull this back. Yeah. What kind of mindset do you have to be? <laughs> First off, the PlayStation fanboy, like the toxicity fanboys, they are desperate. Yeah, they're desperate. Because they're no longer attacking if the game went gold. If, if the game, what, what's the other shit they've done? They, they, they've attacked Starfield in like 18 different ways. Now they're attacking boundaries. Yes. <laughs> it, every game has boundaries. Just some games do it better than others. Yeah. And what's funny is I saw Twitter accounts showing boundaries of Horizon. Did, did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And I'm like, bro, like, but I've never, not in a single game have I I've ever. I've never done that. Well, like. And I, I wouldn't have known that you, know, you, you could do that. Said, you know what Keek said? What he He's said? like, well, I guess they wanted me to be able to walk from New York to California. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
it's but it's just think crazy. about it. It's but like, the, but the, here here is where you gotta apply logic. Think about it. Think about it. What they're asking what they're asking Starfield to do, right? They're pretty much imagine you know a single planet, a single a single planet in Starfield has to be bigger than the biggest GTA map. Like yeah, think like. <laughs> like I, I just don't you would never like th- there's so much stuff going on in Starfield like I honestly it's like once I sur- like I've surveyed a couple plans but I haven't even attempted to like hey I'm going to visit every part of this single it, it just never crossed my mind I, I'll visit I'll come in it's so like alright is it looking true does it look like I get some interesting things in there now I do like the like some of the things that do occur on these planets though right so if you go to their planet and there's nothing going on there's usually just you know there's signs of like you know maybe somebody visited here you can set up a, you can set up a base or whatever so that you can have like a you know additional landing spot there if you need to go back um I do like the fact that when um you do a mission right it when you, when you do a mission that we have to go and get sent to one of these random planets, that the structures that they put there uh, for you to pretty much feel like that you're in the middle of something that's like um, like a, a mission where you're you know fighting pirates or spacers that's what they call them uh, maybe Crimson Fleetlands and I do like the randomization that when you are on these planets and just doing random shit right there's others there's there's other um, you know, spacers that will come just doing their own shit. And if it has to be of a, of a faction of the enemy kind, then, yeah, you guys are going to get into it. But it happens randomly. It's not expected. You know what I mean? It'll just happen like, oh, there's a ship coming through. And they'll get it. And, and they may not even acknowledge you unless they see you. And that's what happened to me, like, moments ago. Like, a ship came through. I was on this thing called, it was called um something Tombstone. Um, But I went in. And a space a, a spacer's crew came in like after me, and I saw them get dropped off, and they went in and they and they went on their way, but I wanted to smoke, so I went in after them and and, and, and usually you know a little special move to take them all out, but um the 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 randomization of the planets and the the um I don't think I've been to enough of them to the point where I I find it I mean, a problem. I feel like. Them. You know, I didn't know this real quick to interrupt you. Yeah, uh, King told me when we were doing uh, our content over IOP. Yeah. You know, if you blow up a ship in it's in a planet's atmosphere, if you scan the planet, the ship is in, is, is, is down on the planet. No. But yeah. th- that explains why there's just random pieces of ships in some of these planets that I've visited. Cause that that now I've seen that I've seen ship parts, just random ship parts on planets that I've um, uh, landed on, and then I I've seen random sh- uh, ships floating in space, like parts of it, uh, uh, parts of it for sure. Um, I do like the diversity and and in, in like uh, cause obviously you'll go to planets that have like no human life and they'll have like their own like animal life or alien life. Um, and I've ran across things like, such as like giant praying mantis, what they look like. Um, there's, I will say the handcrafted planets, the ones that actually have population, they're beautiful. They, they did a, they did a good job on that. Like if you even eliminated all the extra, like the procedure generator and you just went to the planets that they made that, that would still be just quality work that they did. Uh, they did. They did a hell of a job. Have you been to the moon yet, Lunar? Uh, the moon on the on Earth? I, I guess it's technically our moon. Hold up. I'm it, literally it's, playing. <laughs> it's called. Let me, let me, it's let me, called let me. Lunar. Uh, I think it's called something um, Lunar, but I think it, it, it's definitely modeled after our moon. I put a base on there just because I was like, because I don't know when I'm coming back. But I, the first thing I did was put a base on there so that I can. Um, uh, well, uh, there, like, there is a a universe on here called Soul that's literally our universe, like Mars and everything. Yeah, so. Mars. Yep, yep. Uh, it, yeah, Luna. Luna. Right yeah, now. that's that's yeah. Think they did a good. Yeah, 
and I still have no idea what happened to Earth. Do you? No. No. I don't. And so, um, but I think for sure we are about to find out, uh, at least uh, I'm going to find out fairly soon, but yeah, this, um, this game is something else, man. This game is something else. Like I know, I know we're approaching, uh, that hour mark. Just let's talk about the performance a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like that. that's a good perform, uh, a good conversation. I, I played on both. Mm -hmm. Uh, you played on the Series X. Mm -hmm. Did you try it on the Series S, even just to see how it ran? No, I got rid of my uh, kid's Series S. Um, well, King tells me because the Series S only pushes 1440p, it seems like, yeah. that it runs very well on the Series S. Because on the Series X, it pushes 4K with yeah. dynamic 4K. Yeah. My um, Remember, Todd Howard said he plays on the Series S. So I, I imagine it probably runs very well i wish i i wish had i known like i wish i would have kept my a series s i can always you know uh buy the black one or whatever but just just because i'm curious to see myself how it plays but no i've only played it on a series x and my performance remember i told you in the chat and this is before day one patch uh i as of this video the day one patch has been deployed but majority of our gameplay took place prior to day one patch and I felt and, like and real quick. I think we need like we've had we've had Starfield for like two weeks. Yeah, yeah, we we've had it for yeah for a while. This is the earliest I've seen a game go out. Like I've had a game. I, I had Sea of Stars about that long. I had Sea of Stars a little longer than Starfield actually. I think the the longest if it. I think maybe. I had, I had Dying Light 2 for a Dying while. Dying Light 2, okay. Dying Light 2, I feel like right, and, we had that for yeah, a while. Yeah, Dead Island 2 for like a month. Dead Island 2, that's what it was. Dead, Yeah, because I, I, I enjoyed that game. Um, we had Dead Island 2 for a while. I think I might have had... Um, I feel like I had one of the Assassin's Creed games um, for a, 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 a bit amount of time before it came out. But as far as for like Xbox, for a game of this magnitude... I'm sorry, this video's playing. I'm sorry. Oh, Smooth be messing up. Does that surprise you guys? Does it... you know, look, when it comes to the performance, Sorry. yeah, the, my uh... series X. They were... I played on Windows, and it's clearly sixty frames on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the field of view is in a good place on Xbox because even though that it definitely runs better on the series uh, on the on the my on my PC, I got I'm running a a thirty sixty Ti, and I think I have like a fifty eight hundred X, like a Ryzen fifty eight hundred X. A Ryzen 7 5800X. I didn't really have any issues running this on either platform. That's good. Um, because I'm curious to see what it looks like on PC. Obviously, for the you know, when it launches early access, I'll be able to um, you know, do the um PC um play it on PC and see what I'm able to get on it. But and I, again, I apologize, I sin sincerely apologize for uh uh dismissing 30 fps starfield at 30 fps um i'm not saying that oh i don't need 60 fps of course i would love to see uh see how it plays at 60 fps but it ha its performance at 30 fps has not been a hindrance the game for a todd howard rp for a todd howard game it plays it it, it has this it's, it's very fast especially in combat it, it's it's not like a sluggish slow down methodical uh shooter like fallout or anything like that it's very like very punchy and they're doing some trickery where it it, it feel it looks and feels fine it, i get it's at the right speed uh the gunplay is great the movement is great the uh maybe it's the um the motion um the, the motion blur uh trickery that they're doing but um i have no issues literally with how the game uh, performed, uh, no issues with the, how the game confirmed uh, performing the Series X. I definitely want to play on um, the PC to see how much, uh, maybe how much better I get. I want to see how it stresses my PC. And um, remember, I have a I have a, a handicapped card called the 3070 Ti, so um, I can't do. I know I won't be able to do the game as at high as high of a resolution 
um, that I can on um, Xbox, but I know I, I but because I, I should be able to get 60 FPS, it'd just probably be at somewhere between like 1080 or 1200p or some sh uh, something like that. Um, but uh, have you ran into any sort of like uh, uh, bugs? I know uh, a lot of reports were, uh, you know, 15 hours in, no bugs. I, I have came across one game breaking bug mm -hmm. where a faction quest glitched and i couldn't get past a certain section of the game uh ended up like correcting itself uh i actually contacted the bethesda uh you know support thing because we have like an email we can reach out to and uh you know they they said it was part of the day one patch or something yeah. like that and it did get fixed uh but you know for the most part i i will say like i haven't had no issues with this game like at all i really uh, you know there's been like little joking things yeah but that's all. Yeah, so I ran into the one bug, and I only knew it was a bug for one reason, um, was when I first met Sarah Marshall, which is the woman on the cover. We all know on the cover she's a, she's a chick with blonde hair that comes down to her shoulders. When I first met her, she was bald, and I was tripping. I'm like, yo, when we met her in a reveal trailer, she definitely had hair. She has hair on the cover. So, but then I looked and I was thinking, I was like, everybody in the room is bald. So it was this, uh, this glitch that would uh, occur every now and then with everybody in the lodge being bald. And, um, that I believe corrected itself, um, in the day one patch because I have not seen, no one has been bald since then outside of people who are naturally bald. Um, so I, I actually that was had funny. a. I had a glitch where someone's head disappeared and their eyeballs are only seen. I had that glitch too. I had that once and it was and, for my character who had his. And, and and King had uh no it was he no it was it was someone else. It was Nick from Lords of Gaming dot net. He had a glitch where their leg uh Sarah's legs replaced her arms. Was it when she was standing or when she was sleeping? It was she standing. Her arms were her legs. Yeah, that's creepy. Uh, but yeah, the, he said literally he, I think he said he, uh, he just, he like not, he didn't fast travel. He went outside or something like that. Cause he, he went outside of his ship and like it's self-corrected. It's like, I try to tell people, it's like, look, these games are massive. They're going to have issues. Yeah. Uh, but it, it determines if they, if they affect you having fun. Yeah. All I 76 had no fun at launch. Mm -hmm. So the bugs were just, that's all. It, it wasn't Fallout 76. You bought a game that were there were bugs there. That's all. Uh, this game, there's like 5% bugs, 95% game. Uh, for the most part, the bugs you're going to run into, they're going to be little, like funny ha-ha bugs. You yeah. know, Like I said, I did run into a game-breaking thing. I know someone ran into an issue where like it wouldn't let them continue the main storyline, uh, but Keep in mind, we are playing this before the day one patch. We got the day one patch ahead of time before launch. Yeah. Uh, but at that time, I was already past that section yeah. of the map. I didn't have the issue that the other people were saying. Uh, but for the most part, I will go out right now on a limb. This is Bethesda's most... This is Bethesda's best polished game they've ever made. Yeah, I can... I can... It, uh, probably say that I'm only it, saying that based off hearsay. Um, and what's his name was completely right, Matt Booty. He said, "If we launch Bethesda, if we launch Starfield right now, and this was like a year ago, damn, it would be the most polished game that that Bethesda's ever made." And that was a year ago. Yeah. And, and you know, people sit there, oh, you know, what is Microsoft really doing? They took a whole year of funding on Starfield to make sure you got a better game. Yeah. That's what Microsoft's doing. Uh, just to give you a heads up, I found out because I, I didn't realize I had the gameplay of me doing a work shift. Uh, at least at the time, at the time I got the job, it was paying me uh, 400 uh, credits uh, per shift <laughs> for the for Xenofresh. Uh, that's the first job I took. It was 400 credits uh, per shift where I, the thing is, is I have to make like aura. Um, wow. Uh, but uh the thing is, yes, this is a very polished game, very polished. And I feel like everything 
was handled with a great level of detail from the space combat, which is, like I said, it was my least favorite part, but I love the mini game of managing resources during that fight. Like, that's the one thing is like, okay, I I know I'm going to get my ass kicked in the fight, but I, I enjoy doing the whole, like, okay, how, how much am I going to allocate to my missiles? How much am I going to allocate to my shield and, and my ability? Or how much do I allocate to... Um, Grab so I can get out of there, uh, get out, get out of dodge. Um, again, with the performance, the visuals, the gameplay, um, I just think they did a wonderful job. They, like they did their thing, man. They did their thing. It's um, it's my favorite and so far. Like again, I have been like, there's a lot of games that came out. Um, easily for me, it's my favorite game. Uh, so far, like, it's my favorite game from Bethesda. It's my favorite game of the year. Um, the amount of hours that I put in, um, I haven't fit, been fatigued of playing. And the crazy thing about this, and one thing about this, they somehow found the fun factor. I thought my whole thing about suffering, I didn't think it would be fun. But it's actually fun to play. Like, I've actually had fun playing uh, the game, and then when I came into something that got bored doing, you know you what I did? It'd be like a lot of like spaceship, yeah. It'd be like a lot of fun factors. Yeah, I, I actually the biggest like what the fuck moment I had with the game was just the space combat in general. I, I mean, you, I'm sure Kiss was gonna uh, contest with this. Like almost every time he's like, "What you doing?" I'm like, "I'm blowing ships up." <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I was the definition of a space pirate. Yeah, definitely. Um. No, but I'm I'm having fun with the game, and every time, like I said, if I, I'm doing something where I'm not having fun, like if like all right, I'm not, I just I leave, I get in my ship, and I fucking leave it. And I was like, all right, I would just activate this ship, dude. I started. You know what's crazy? You want to hear something crazy? Mm. I just started the Crimson Fleet ship, and I think that whole structure is insane. Like, I don't know if I really want to fully get into it. You know how they say don't get in too deep? I don't know if I really want to get in too deep because I feel like the Crimson Fleet is going to bring the, the how I really want to play the game. I try to be good. Like, I try like, you know, because I, I have, you know, I, but I really want to be. But the thing is, the Crimson Fleet missions uh, structures are sick. Like, I, I like I, I like it. I like the whole, the whole pro I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, obviously. Well, no, they, they said you, you have to inf infiltrate. But the thing is. I feel like I'm going to want to keep it. Now, I did make my first mistake, right? Because I went in there as a good guy. I was, you know how they ask you to uh, to kill somebody on another ship? Uh, mm -hmm. You had to go adopt the ship, and, and they I won't tell them. you. <laughs> so now... Because I lost... Once you, again, I lost... You lost the persuasion. Places, yeah, I, I did... And I just, I just shot. Yeah, yeah like, so... I, now, this one... Like, when I'm in a tight situation like that, I try to make it as quick as possible so that nobody has a reaction. So... When I, now, mind you, how late I did this mission. Now, I, all the stuff that I did, all the stuff that I earned. So, once I realized I lost the persuasion discussion, I just, I, I'll just, maybe you'll recognize what I did. I just hit one move, and that was it. <laughs> it's, it's just like, what do they expect me to do? Like, I've, I've lost the persuasive thing. What I like is the, you know, I still prefer the level up system from the yeah. old Bethesda games, mm -hmm. like, you know, Fallout 3. Uh, Skyrim to a yeah. degree, Oblivion. You know, I like them giving me a certain amount of points every level and letting me distribute it to what I want to play. Mm -hmm. This is a decent, uh, you know, it, it, it's the next best move to me. I, I do feel like there was a lot of scenarios where I remember there was like a map where there was like a bunch of level sixty robots, mm. and I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that one. <laughs> so, and then I see this this computer stand. And it's like, do you do you have a an expert, you know, hacking thing or whatever it is? And I'm like, no, I don't. So if I would have had that, I could have deactivated the robots or I could have rewired them to fight for me. Yep. Like they give you a lot of options depending on what you do. You can persuade yourself to a lot of the game. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. Yeah, I've done that. Like I've 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 gone into infiltrated areas where there's a lot of like space and I've turned their turrets against them um the, I I don't know I've just been having a, a blast with this game and and 
they they they, they were right. It, it, it's extremely big, and and then it, with each, I want to say with like I I haven't stopped running out of new things to see and do. And some of the stuff has like literally changed the way. Like again, like some of the like essential things that I've like came across, like like Crimson Fleet. Like I don't know why I've held off on any of their missions until um until uh just recently. My jetpack. For the most part of the game, I haven't been you know, traversing with the jetpack. I just started uh, doing that, which is another cool thing uh, for um, evadeability during combat and stuff like that. Um, I've got a, a, a ton of you know good weapons legendary weapons um and i have a good um a good amount of suits like i like there's there's like this one space suit i like wearing like i said it's only good in uh different uh, uh unique scenarios but it looks damn good it it, lo it looks damn good which it will be showing off in my you know my standalone video and, and some other video coverage that i got uh for the game but um man they did it they did a good uh, job on this game uh I don't know if you want to, um, like, what is your, like, I guess your, your overall, like, thoughts. I don't know if you would sign um, a number or a grade, maybe a grade of what you played, uh, uh, of what your experience is. It's a 9 out of 10. Fun. You know, 8.5, 9 out of 10. I, I, I do think there are things that could have improved, mm -hmm. but none of those things made me drop the game. So that's why I'm leaning more towards the 9. Uh, but you know, I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed Starfield. You know, I'm playing it right now. So yeah. like, yeah. See, the, again, like, what? After you tell me what you would give it, what do you think the Metacritic score is going to okay. be? Okay. Because I know you have like a double down bet on this. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. So personally, um, I, I'm feeling really, really, really good about the game. I've personally, this game, Starfield. It, I don't know what else is coming out for the rest of the year. Uh, I know there's a uh, Starfield right now is my game of the year. Um, I'm I'm at a 95. This is like a this is a a um, a, a to a minus uh, game easily. Um, I think on Metacritic, you know, considering the whole Eurogamer scandal and a few, <laughs> I think it lands at a nine. I'm gonna say it lands at like a 91 on Metacritic. 91. I think that's fair. Yeah, but what we really want to know is what you guys think of Starfield. Will you be playing Starfield uh, when it uh, launches? Uh, what is the first thing you're gonna do? What you looking for? Uh, do, do, do anything that you've uh, that surprised you of what we said, of what you saw in the game clips? Um, we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Um, appreciate shout out to BG. Uh, Broken Games, uh, Weapon Wheel Podcast, Weapon Wheel Patreon. Uh, it's been a special edition of the Play Xbox Podcast, and we're talking exclusively about Starfield. We hope you guys enjoyed uh, what we've uh, talked and this about. Is, this isn't going to Patreon. I think it's going straight no, it's to going the, straight uh, to this is, Yeah, this is going straight to uh, to the tube. Uh, just going to launch straight on BG's channel, um, but under the Play Xbox. So it's Play Xbox 15, Starfield Edition, and... Um, we really hope you guys uh, enjoyed um, enjoyed the show, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Well, next week, because my man Attic got to go to PAX West, and uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the next time we're back here for a podcast, we'll have a lot, lot to say. So, uh, happy Starfield Day, because this is... Yeah, this is definitely this week's Planet Xbox. Yeah. Don't expect nothing Saturday. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Um Add, you got anything you want to uh, say before we head out? Yeah, so definitely, uh, you know, um, IOP is going to have their own. Uh, so at this point, you know, you guys got to the end of the video. So definitely go over there and check mine, Cog, King, uh, Nick from WordsGaming.net, and mm -hmm. Solve's opinion on the game. It was three hours long. Wow. And, and at this point, the future addict is on a plane, and he hated every bit of that editing. Three mm -hmm. hours of a video, he hated every fucking bit of that editing. Wow, man! Wow, that's crazy. Um, three hours. I, I, I'm. I'm. A, that's a. That's a ride. That, that's a, a ride to and from work. Maybe four times for me to get through that entire thing. But I definitely want to hear everybody's point of view. Kings, Cog. Uh, obviously, I got your point of view. Um, and a sovereign. He, he's very meticulous in his um uh ex, his uh 
explanation of the game and stuff like that. So I definitely want to check that out. Um, again, I got a video. I worked on multiple videos. One of them ended up being 35 minutes. I might have to update it. I'm not sure, depending on how I feel. I'm still playing Starfield. Um, and it's it's great. Recommend it. It's game it's my game of the year. I don't see I don't think anything's gonna beat it. I think I'm still leaning towards Boulder's Gate, and it's not because of anything Starfield didn't do. I just I love turn based games, so like their gameplay grabs me a little bit more. Yeah. But I would say this game has a way more like journey to it. Yeah. A lot easier for people to play. See, I uh, see I wish I was skilled like you to play a game like Borders Gate, but I'm happy like games like Starfield exist that I can actually jump into. This is a must have. Nine and a half out of ten is game of the year worthy. Get on it, man. Check out the video. S subscribe to the channel. Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. Ugh, globe. We're out of here. And we're off into the far beyond, into the Starfield. Peace.